In fall of 2008, I was awarded a Fulbright uh, scholarship to uh, be a visiting lecturer at a university in southern India. And um, the proposal consisted of uh, teaching a course to documentary students in um, probably either a team capacity, uh, it, which means collaborating with a professor over there, or independently, and I wasn't quite sure what form it would take. But these were graduate students, uh, second semester, a uh, third semester graduate students in um, an MA program in communication. The university is located in the state of Andhra Pradesh, uh, in the city of Hyderabad, which has, in the last decade or so, become the hub of technology growth in India. And all sorts of uh, IT companies have uh, pitched in headquarters there, uh, Google being one of the most recent ones. But IBM has had a long-standing presence over there. So it's a very interesting city to work in, um, because up until the independence movement, the city was ruled by the Nizam, and it has this amazing kind of syncretic culture, because 50% of the city is, is Muslim, and it has a very traditional Islamic culture that's mixed in very quietly in a very syncretic way with traditional Indian, southern Indian culture. And at the same time, there is this amazing sort of superstructure of technology being built on these many layers of history. So I was excited uh, to, uh, to get the opportunity. And um, I worked uh, with the students for about five months. Um, amazing bunch. I mean, I, it was a very surreal experience for me because I had never worked with students in India. I was a student when I left India. And many years had passed. Uh, many things had changed. Amongst them, the most salient change was the amount of media savvy that the students had gained. Because as soon as I left India, of course, as things turn out, we had this major explosion in especially on the television scene. Uh, we went from a one-channel monopoly to 40, 60, 80, 100. Every year kept adding, and not a just uh, cable and satellite, but direct-to-home broadcasting. Uh, everything that was state-of-the-art just automatically went to India at the point. And therefore, a big mushrooming of institutes and you know diploma programs, degree programs in communication, advertising, the whole, the whole aspect of what makes the industry move forward. So I was looking at a, a, a group of kids who had literally grown up in those years, post-1990, which is when I left. And so I had no idea what to expect. They were amazing. I mean, there's a level of deference in India, which is still available <laughs> to faculty. <laughs> so people would rise and say, good afternoon or good morning, and, and they would call me sir. Uh, and. Uh, and yet they understood that they, I could be friendlier because I came across in a friendlier way than maybe their own uh, professors were. Um, I loved collaborating with them. They worked wonders with very limited resources. Um, the program is trying to find more, more uh, cameras and, and computer equipment and so on, but they had a few, and they maxed out what, what was available to them. And they, they reached out to making more from little and in, in the way that it was very impressive to me. Um, the program actually delivers quite a bit. I mean, they, these are MS students in a whole semester's uh, course. Uh, my colleague and I, and we were te team teaching this course, uh, they produced four documentaries of about 25 minutes uh, durations each. In addition to that, I had proposed, as a part of my Fulbright proposal, uh, that they work with, in collaboration with a community-based organization to do one advocacy piece. So that was an, an added component. What I did was I involved the entire class into producing one project, and I divided them up into the various segments of that project. So we, we were working with the Heritage Con Conservation Organization, which was trying to oppose the kind of rampant and wild development that is happening in Hyderabad. And they were trying to conserve historical uh, areas, including some millennial uh, stone formations in, in, in Hyderabad, which date, and I'm not kidding this, 2,500 million years ago. These, these stones were formed as the Earth's crust was cooling. And these are amazing stone formations all around Hyderabad, and you cannot miss them as you drive around the city, especially the outskirts. And you'll find this gigantic kind of uh, you know, obelisk perched on top of this tiny little stone. And this only nature could have arranged that. And uh, developers are expanding. And as a result of that, 
all of this natural infrastructure or natural heritage is, is crumbling. Some of these groups have been trying to advocate and, and getting these areas listed as heritage sites. So my students uh, worked work for one such organization called Society to Save the Rocks uh, to produce an 11-minute uh, video, which they are now using to advance for their the cause. 